tell you is there are a lot of connections you have to make that come with the case. Uh, I'm going to connect these two uh, SATA hard drive cables. One of them goes to the top hard drive port and the other one goes to the eSATA connector. Uh, I'm not going to be picky about where they go so I'm just going to put them wherever they will fit. And this is the USB 3 connector for the case. That happens to be right here. Okay, there's a couple of other connectors. These are connectors for the case that I found. One of them is for the HD audio, so you can connect your audio devices in the front panel of the case. And then I have a USB cable. And there's a USB slot right here, so I'll plug it into that one. My other USB slot is taken up by the Corsair cooler, so I won't have that. Then I have other pins to figure out. I have power LED, plus and minus, power switch, uh, reset, hard drive LED, power cable. And that powers, I guess that powers my fans that are already connected in the case. I think this is the main header that I'm going to be using. Uh, there's plus LED, plus power button. So it's very important, of course, that you plug these into the right place. There's power switch. So from what I can tell, so I need to figure which one of these is positive and which is negative. Anyway, I'm going to take a closer look at my manual, make sure I have these plugged in the right places, and just to make sure that everything is where it should be, because you don't want to turn this on and then have something plugged in the wrong spot and fry your motherboard or not be able to turn on your computer. Okay, I went ahead and uh, finished doing the headers as far as the switches, the hard drive, LED, the power switch, the reset switch, the power LED, uh, all of those I did right here in this one area. I went ahead and did the power and the SATA connection on the DVD CD-ROM drive. Here's the uh, SATA data and I used the converter from Molex to SATA power because uh, so I could Reduce the number of cables that are required because I, I needed Molex for other areas. Uh, so I used this cable uh, for this and also connected the power for the Corsair on the same cable using a uh, another SATA connector converter cable. What I have for that last bay is I have a fan controller which is by Next Z. You can see what it's supposed to look like when it's all lit up. You can control up to five fans and you can monitor four or five temperatures, I'm not sure, maybe five temperatures. Uh, control speed and monitor temperatures in your case. And I'm a little hesitant to put this in. You can see it's a mess of wires. Uh, most of these are power connectors for fans and speed controllers. And then these devices here, and there are five of them, are temperature sensors that you can put wherever you want in your case. You can see they're labeled. So uh, this also requires a power Molex. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in so that I can get the power connected on everything I have in my case so far. I plan to put this in the top slot. I'll put a couple of screws in the side to make sure it's secure. And then I'll hook up all the stuff in the back a little bit later. Okay, I'm ready to install the uh, video card. I finally got it in, and I got my memory in. And uh, I got, for the video card, I got the EVGA GeoForce GTX 660 Ti. I got the FTW version for the win. I'm going to put my gloves on for this. Put on my wrist strap. Never had a video card that looked this nice. You can see there's two six pin connectors at the top. PCI 3.0 connector on the bottom. Okay, 
what I've done is I've removed two of these plates in the back of my case with these little screws because this video card, which is a monster video card in my opinion, requires two plates in the back. So it takes up two positions and it's fairly long. Okay, I can't see from this angle. I guess it went in the slot. We'll put these screws in. Okay, my power supply has six plus two, so they'll do up to eight. And it has this one here that says PCIe. This one says PCIe. So the blue end plugs into the power supply, and the black end plugs in here. It should go like this. That one goes like that. Okay. And they will both plug in down there. I'll they'll both plug in on the blue side of the power supply. Uh, memories come matched. Hopefully these two, this pair are matched. And you're supposed to put in... Uh, these are color-coded. You need to check your motherboard. It'll tell you which ones are paired together. So put your pairs in the same slot. So it's black and black and yellow to yellow. They should have paired memory. These are crucial ballistic memory dims. They have LEDs in them. That's the main reason I got them. I've used these before. This is a newer version of what I had in the past. But they work fine. They're rated uh, pretty highly on Newegg and Amazon. Uh, the, the biggest complaint I get or I've seen is that some of the LEDs don't work. Hopefully these will all work. That's the main reason I got them. Uh, there's a little key in the memory chip so it will only go one direction. So you line that up. These little clips all the way back first. And that went in pretty nicely. And just push them until they kind of snap. All right, that's the first set. Got one more to go. Ah, one of my memory chips wasn't quite all the way down. You want to make sure they're all the way down. You want a good, solid connection. You don't want any memory problems. It's a little scary putting together a computer because. You don't know if you got everything plugged in exactly right till you turn it on and do the smoke test. Then if something's wrong, it may not always be obvious what. Okay, that's it. All four of my memory sticks are in. So the only thing I have left now is to connect all the fan controllers to my fan controller. And I should be ready, I think, to turn it on. Okay, I have assembled the entire computer. It's now complete. I've actually tested it a couple of times. Found a few problems. The video card wasn't seated all the way in. There were a couple of fans connected wrong. Power supplies weren't hooked up right. Uh, this side of that front panel for the fan controller had one of these, and it wasn't secured. It, this wasn't working. So I had to take this off and add two screws to hold that in secure. I have temperature sensors coming from that fan controller. I have one here, one here. I have one down here for the hard drive. I have one near the memory. And I have one up in the radiator. Just to give me an idea what the temperatures are running. Also the motherboard will read temperatures directly. So got the memory installed. Got the CPU, the cooler. Got the radiator for the cooler here, new fan here, video card, power supply, fan installed, fan, hard drives, CD-ROM drive. One of the things you'll need to do once you uh, finish building your computer, you'll need to set up the BIOS, especially if you're doing RAID configuration or trying to overclock that type of thing so what you'll need to do of course when you first start up your computer you won't have an operating system so it should come up with a screen telling you don't have an operating system and 
press F2 or something like that um, for you to go into the BIOS for the setup. And uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm rebooting the computer so that I can, it says F2 down here or delete. So I just keep hitting F2 to, to run the setup utility. And that beep tells me it's there. This is that screen you just saw that said Control I was for the uh, uh, was for the RAID configuration. Here is the screen that we have for the BIOS setup for this particular motherboard. Every BIOS is going to be a little bit different. Uh, they've changed quite a bit over the years. Here I have this is a overclocking motherboard, so it has overclocking profiles and that is what I've used on mine uh, I'm using stage 7 for overclocking the processor and if you look at that it's 4600 megahertz or 4.6 gigahertz and that, I'm comfortable with that I may go higher I may go to 5000 uh, I'm not going to do that right now today but I could uh, or I could build my own user profile but I prefer this Nick Shees uh, knows what he's doing I don't really know so I just use one of his profiles and it seems to be working fine uh, you can just scroll through here and see um, what the settings are one of the things you'll want to do is uh, here I bumped up my DRAM frequency to two, 2,000 megahertz. Uh, I think that's megahertz. Uh, it was set by default at 1333, and the DRAM's actually uh, rated at 1866. So I bumped it up a little higher than what it was rated at. There's a lot of things here that you can do change the default settings and well one of the things you can do here if you want to boot from your CD-ROM you can set that to boot first uh, right now it is set to boot for my Intel RAID volume 0 if you ever want to boot off your CD-ROM you'll need to change that to boot up first otherwise we'll keep booting off the hard drive here I can read the temperatures on my motherboard there's 10 temperature sensors on the motherboard which is pretty incredible plus CPU fan speeds and chassis fan speeds which I'm not using because I'm using a fan controller okay on this bias the uh, settings for the hard drives are under tools and storage configuration and it shows here we have we're using SATA controller SATA mode is RAID once you set this to RAID, you boot up your computer, there's another screen that comes up. I think it says Control I or Control C to go into the RAID configuration. And that's how you would set up your RAID drives. Pair which ones you want to be in a RAID configuration and whether you want them to be RAID 0 or RAID 1 configuration. Fixing the power on the computer so you can see what the final product looks like. I'm just going to touch the power button here on top. And you can see the lights are coming on. It's starting to boot up. It's going to power on self test. Now it's into Windows. And voila! Look how fast that is. That's amazing. Thank you very much for watching my video and I would encourage you to give it a try. It's really rewarding uh, in a lot of ways. It can be frustrating though when you run into problems, but just take them one at a time and hopefully you can get through it. And check the internet. There's a lot of good advice on the internet. Thanks. Bye.